Thank you very much for your introduction, Victor, and welcome to our presentation of Sabina and my paper from global problem to local solution, how a future directed circular economy can foster social change. So to our first slide, we decided we would like to start our presentation with a quote from Martin Luther King. Uh, I think Victor, if you could uh, go to the next slide, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so in general, anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So we thought this um, quote captures how inequality and oppression affects everyone uh, directly or indirectly, um, which is what this, this whole topic is uh, based on because human activity and uh, more in particular economic, ec economic activity pushes the planet beyond its natural boundaries and the consequences of which some uh, people have already experienced become threatening to human existence and the planet as we know it uh, and also result in global migration movements that contribute to the growing number of people being socially disadvantaged. And these developments, uh, of course, challenge our present day societal structures and show that there is a big need for more balanced local structures uh, in addition to tackling ecological challenges. So climate change and inequality affect everyone directly or indirectly. And one way to overcome this potential dichotomy between the present and the future generations and the tensions between the discourses is uh, provided by sustainable entrepreneurship. So generally, small and medium enterprises, so-called SMEs, represent 98% of all European businesses and contribute uh, about 50% to the European GDP, showing that there is immense opportunity to drive social change by changing or adjusting the structures and the way those SMEs uh, work. So incorporating economic health as well as environmental resilience um, is an important factor to make change happen. And this is, for example, promoted through the system of uh, a circular economy. The circular economy has gained momentum since the 1970s as a future forward economic model defined as being restorative and regenerative by design and aiming to keep product components and materials at their highest utility and value at all times. However, the circular economy has also been criticized as being so-called silent on the social dimension uh, with no explicit mentioning of social perspectives within the conceptual approaches for sustainable development. So what we are interested is, in is exploring through five entrepreneurial projects that we chose from the Netherlands, the UK, Germany, Italy, and Denmark. Our projects are classified as social enterprises, which we chose. And uh, additionally to being social enterprises, they also have an environmental focus, which is expressed through the application of the circular business strategies. So this is what we chose them. Sorry about this confusion. And so all our enterprises we chose work um, either with refugees or disabled people or migrants, while also focusing on um, creativity and craftsmanship as an underpinned process of social change. And uh, also they are predominantly located within this fashion sector um, because we actually all know the projects um, through yeah, our own connections. And as Sabina is uh, predominantly working in the fashion sector, we are also linked to quite some projects there. However, as the process of design is not specified in the definition of a circular economy per se, uh, we drew uh, from terms such as design activism and social design to investigate ways fostering a shift to sustainable economic systems intertwined with an active formation of multicultural and inclusive communities. So design activism in this context means the design as a process of envisioning an activity rather than a product, while social design comprises concepts and activities within participatory approaches to researching and generating new structures aiming to actively shape individual inclusion as well as impact the local communities. So through design activism and social design, uh, this contributes to positive social change defined as the process of transforming patterns of thought, behavior and social relationships 
institutions and social structures to then come up with um, structures and ideas that are beneficial for individuals, communities, organizations, and society as a whole, and also the environment. So to put this all together is that this paper looks at how circular economy and sustainable entrepreneurship can, as complementary synchronized business forms, um, drive social change through the unique incorporation of design activism and social design. So this case study investigates similarities and strengths of social circular economy, as well as obstacles limiting the scaling of production and business resilience of these five selected case studies to um, yeah, learn more about the business structures and the product development um, of the projects that we chose. So with this research, we aspire to develop a guidance for other small to medium enterprises uh, to facilitate successful frameworks um, that help that social change becomes the heart of a circular business model instead of being a side effect only. But we will come back to that um, more in detail later on in this presentation. So now we would like to introduce you to uh, the project that we interviewed um, and chose for this case study. The first one being ABA, which is um, which evolved from a student initiative as part of a NACTUS, which is a, a social entrepreneurial um, yeah, global student-led NGO. And uh, Arbor is run by a master's student in sustainability science and policy since 2018. And um, Arbor creates notebooks from post-consumer waste, re post -consumer waste re using uh, single-sided printed paper, which they usually collect from the university printers in Maastricht in the Netherlands. So they have like green boxes there asking people to um, put paper that is only one-sided printed into those boxes instead of throwing it away and they then use it to produce together with autistic man at a local social organization uh, those recycled notebooks uh, while also using Maastricht Art Academy's test prints um, or packaging waste as a front cover of those notebooks which you can see on the left side the Heineken ones and uh, yeah the, the other ones next to it. The, the next project called the Andere Zeep is another project also from the Netherlands and actually also from Inactus or base uh, at Inactus. And um, the Andere Zeep, which means the other soap in Dutch, um, creates certified sustainable soaps together with refugees. And um, they, uh, the team consists of about 15 people. And um, together with yeah, refugees and facilitators, those soaps um, are created and wrapped in post-consumer waste material and then sold at the weekly farmer's market in Maastricht in the center, uh, connecting students, refugees and uh, the local community. So um, that is also part of the whole project, connecting the refugees to the place that they're currently living in, as well as the people working together and um, yeah, incorporating everyone also belongs to Enactus, so the first to belong to Enactus. The third project um, is from Hamburg, uh, so in Germany, it was founded in 2016 and is called Bridge and Tunnel. Um, it is led by uh, a designer and a cultural scientist and uh, they focus on upcycling pre and post consumer waste, only jeans, um, to design fashion, uh, bags and other accessories. Um, so one of those beautiful designs you can see on the pictures as well, a, a jacket made out of different um, fabric, jeans fabrics. And by working with six immigrants and long-term unemployed people from their local community, so also around Hamburg, they integrate socially disadvantaged individuals um, being less or entirely inexperienced workers into the team of uh, 11 people. So um, also a rather small team. Um, our next project is Mending for Good, which is a project that offers creative design driven um, solutions to luxury brands for the issue of waste and excess stock. Um, so what they do is they specifically through a network of high quality craft projects, they link um, social cooperatives based in Italy and um, they uh, have a very circular philosophy by remaking, repurposing, and recrafting brands' excess raw materials. 
and create virtuous collaborative partnerships between those different points. Oh no, sorry, it's, it's those slide, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, our last project from Denmark. So we've got, yeah, Germany, Netherlands, Denmark, and Italy. Um, is she works Atelier, which evolved from a research project through a collaboration with the municipality in Kolding, which is in Denmark. And led by a designer and founder, um, it's also 15 women, only women, from different cultural backgrounds that work together in a team to create textile interior products, uh, primarily from pre-consumer waste sourced from Danish textile companies. So it's a lot of pillows and um, blankets and things like that. And um, through that, they create jobs for the women involved while fabric waste is reduced. So they have eight women employed. Um, and it is now, after the research has ended, it's now an independent company as well. So selecting the projects from all those different European countries offered a broad and multicultural perspective on similar enterprise structures um, embedded into various cultural environments, which also enables us to generalize these findings better. Coming to the methodology now, so the next slide. Um, so what we did is we conducted online interviews with each of the four, each of the five uh, project leaders, identifying general project frameworks and benefits uh, from working with multicultural and inclusive settings, as well as challenges for business and project participants and uh, the sociocultural impact achieved. The interviews we conducted were uh, online because of COVID, of course, um, and semi-structured with predetermined open-ended questions, which allowed us uh, to get detailed responses, but still unexpected insights, um, whilst also increasing reliability and consistency by not having the interviews too open. Uh, we recorded those responses and transcribed them for evaluation, uh, giving qualitative information about each individual project and uh, using a coding pro process to identify main themes. Uh, additionally, to the interviews, all project leaders completed an online survey comprised of 12 statements covering the subjects discussed in the interviews, where they were asked to relate their answers to a scale from zero to low. Uh, from zero to low to five. Um, and of this, you can see a graphical depiction uh, on the right. Uh, I think a very beautiful depiction of data. So the different questions we asked and um, quantifying the collected data. So basically the interview data into those uh, survey questions allowed us to have a comparison between projects, even though diverse in subject experience and structure and uh, also develop a clearer picture of shared values, challenges, and project impacts. And uh, also supported finding variation and nuances within the information collected because it's a more objective approach, which is why we did that additional lead to the interviews. Um, so based on these interviews and surveys, we uh, developed theories for areas such as business structures, advantages and challenges, mindsets, and social impact. And these theories then formed our basis for the proposal, which aims to offer guidance for other SMEs on how to actively merge circular economy with social change and make it a heart of the whole business concept. So um, starting with um, our results, um, I would like to begin with the business structures in general. So the first part of the study seek to find out just very much generally speaking how each of the five investigated projects, uh, what the business structures are like, the product development, the manufacturing, how it supports local and social engagement. So in all our projects, participants, as well as project leads come from a variety of uh, different cultural backgrounds. Um, and uh, especially also from different life stages, because it could be students as well as parents and young adults, um, ranging from even uh, not even adults uh, to older men and women. And uh, also in one case uh, with Arva, they're working together with young men with autism um, that also then participate in the production located in the social organization. And um, all projects base their product development on circular principles, 
meaning that closed loops exist where the nature of the product allows, such as the soaps, um, or the external waste management, for example, the notebooks, where external waste is used to create these notebooks. So through repurposing waste materials whilst creating an inclusive working situation, the spotlight shines on the two most important aspects for all four five business ideas. The first one being sourcing waste material predominantly from local sources and therefore addressing environmental challenges such as pollution and climate change. Uh, then putting together design activism, social value and therefore positive social change. Uh, uh, yeah, and the second one being inclusivity and multiculturality uh, being the second pillar. And through this, um, the social value becomes a part of what should be an expected holistic approach within a circular business strategy, uh, but usually isn't yet, which however these projects implement. Um, so exploring the motivation of creating circular business structures while tackling social injust injustice, we found that project leaders actively utilize social responsibility. So they evaluate themselves as problem solvers, their beliefs and vision seem to be the main cause for founding projects, measuring their circular economy principles, seeking to bring positive social change. So we could tell that these people are really personally motivated uh, to create positive social change and to make a difference in terms of environmental sustainability, meaning that the story around the products created, connect, uh, created connects the individual with a broader societal context and uh, the product becomes the identity of value and vision. So incorporating all these two pillars. Um, I think that's the next slide now and Sabina will continue. Yes, thanks, Pia. So following on from our investigation, we defined uh, similar advantages that really resulted from the project's multicultural but also inclusive structures. And we identified that everyone involved throughout all the projects really learns about other life concepts, um, which was a benefit offering insights into similarities, but also differences that directly influence the openness towards other people, as one of the project uh, leads uh, stated in, in the interview. Whilst highlighting social, social justice, the multicultural experience also gives participants purpose and furthermore, as Pia mentioned earlier, brings the heart to the project. And overall benefits were seen as refining participants' dignity, increasing their self-confidence, but also connecting them with others, fostering a very individual integration. So in correspondence to founders' visions and beliefs when projects were developed in the beginning, cultural diversity in their case really opened up mindsets and creates acceptance amongst participants, project leaders, leaders but also customers alike. And to sum this up, uh, one of the project lead states uh, that their products are seen as the materialization of a mindset of inclusion, fairness, as well as sustainability. The, the projects, um, similar to other entrepreneurial businesses, uh, focus um, or face challenges, um, such as a lack of funding of or promotion on a local level as well. So limitations in some cases um, really mirrored what other entrepreneurial businesses also experienced, but they had some, some um, very distinct challenges that resulted from working with multicultural participants. And these were particularly seen in the language barrier as well as shyness at the beginning of a project, for example. The latter then has further impact where due to other cultural structures, for example, men and women are not really used to working together. The multicultural and inclusive working environments also face day-to-day -day challenges beyond actual tasks, which were slightly different. Um, these were tasks, uh, challenges such as being exposed to different work ethics, for example, resulting from different cultural backgrounds, or including inexperienced employees who need further general guidance. The legal inability to pay their workers additionally impacts some of the projects in a negative way. 
Um, however, Project Leads were quite innovative in their response and uh, sh simply shared spare time activities to express value and give something back to the people of the project. So generally speaking, it can be said that processes at times are more time consuming for them due to the special needs of some of, of, some of the participants, sorry, where a different understanding or work pace um, is required, but also where as a result of participant teams being less stable because uh, the refugees, for example, uh, left their, um, their homes, an interrupted working environment is caused. One thing we also found was that um, across all five projects, all people involved experienced how their work unites them. And multiculturality is related to better problem solving performance, access to unconventional knowledge and creative idea expansion. This leads to our assumption that similar to processes of design thinking, for example, a multicultural experience can be seen as an approach to create unique teams where business value increases when more culturally diverse viewpoints are brought together. So, in our project's cases, people from disadvantaged backgrounds really had a feeling of belonging and a daily purpose, purpose joining the project. It had a positive snowball effect on their families, uh, which was really interesting to identify and um, further social environments where, for example, mothers at work were shown or men performing craft activities, which in some cultures could be perceived as being female, for example. Um, overall, having a paid job really helped them to integrate themselves, learn new skills and be supported in this process. While project leaders benefit from new perspective taking and approaches that enrich their everyday life, local communities um, were also included by personal interactions on farmers markets, for example, which P Pia mentioned earlier, or small shops, where customers then could learn more about ongoing projects in their hometown. So in essence, one really major factor can be highlighted, and that's the collective mindset that all of the participants had. And this aligns to the concept of social innovation. Um, project leaders and participants develop innovative solutions by being responsive to diversity, the team's ideas and knowledge whilst providing a home for difference. Collaborative problem solving facilitates the incorporation of new insights, uh, needs, but also the creation of value, resulting in products and production processes adding social value. So aiming to find out what measures could help to support the projects, um, we also identified that answers slightly differ from one to, other, from, from one to the other project. However, we categorized average interview results into themes of four main areas, which were funding, social support, legal advice and promotion through and within local communities. Whilst having access to business grants is seen as a substantial benefit for all of them, a further emphasis is also to be placed on social support. And this is mainly because participants do not only face challenges of being inexperienced with work life as such, but furthermore, they are exposed to difficulties resulting from dealing with bureaucracy, for example. Uh, from project lead side, having access to information about where to get help for specific problems is said to foster social inclusion as project leads are not really trained in social services or um, other related integrative activities. So cultivating connections to local communities was also evaluated as supportive to facilitate the promotion of their inclusive projects. Um, in general, transformation processes such as the transition towards a circular economy are always rooted in changing individual perceptions and practices. Thus, the focus really lies on how business and community actors through their behavior become part or not of new collective practices, which are then challenging the routines in economic processes. Embedded into the principles of a circular economy, value creation of as of today mainly takes place on product level when businesses concentrate on designing out waste or keeping products in the loop. Hence, many businesses do not carefully consider their opportunities to drive social change. And this is where design comes into play. And although design is acknowledged as a powerful tool to create better futures, 
how designers actually practice often takes the social backseat. And while in our study, all project leaders share common mindset to generate impact on an env environmental and the social level, other entrepreneurs might lack a similar belief, interest, or even vision to create similar business structures as business development is often driven by very unique interests which do not naturally include social aspects. Um, they can be influenced by others such as monetary value, for example. Um, we kind of felt like to respond to the global challenges on a local level, we really need to have more businesses on board joining a social path. And considering the latter, we then also asked how we can shape conditions for SMEs that can um, in such a way that the individual factor of motivation can partly level out through clear additional support on a regulatory political level if there's little or no, even no belief or vision to create social business structures. And then on the other side, um, we asked ourselves what would happen if uh, government or whether governments would be interested at all as additional support might be evaluated as admitting systems failure, for example, and uh, shifting responsibility to the individual instead. So we kind of looked at all the uh, interview outcomes to then propose a um, new approach to uh, business support. And we propose the principle of a entrepreneurial social circular business toolbox. This toolbox aims at supporting the development process through an adaptation of basic frameworks, whilst offering a pick and choose for individual brand needs um, where an initial business structure already exists. Three main aspects can be supported on a political level. Uh, so while often SME businesses are limited in their economic power to employ workers, our projects face additional restrictive legal settings. Policies creating flexible forms of employability, for example, could ease the process of integrating minorities on a long-term basis. Thus, successful inclusive businesses, as other SMEs are able to build, could tackle the lack of fin finances resulting in project growth to increase the positive impact on communities and local regions. Uh, but the challenges resulting from the multicultural background primarily reach beyond the actual day-to-day -day business, as we um, identified. While project leaders do have a personal motivation to support the participants with their unique needs, they sometimes lack knowledge on how to solve a general problem or who to reach out to for help. Therefore, a how-to life in form of yellow pages could help project leaders to be better prepared and more efficient in their support. Projects benefit in many ways from their multicultural and inclusive settings, including individual growth as well as broad, a broader business perspective. So supporting inclusive structures from a community side through networking opportunities with local business partners could form inclusive leadership training, for example. And this would then increase an interest or could increase an interest in building diverse businesses. On a community level, the toolbox comprises two elements. The full implementation of circular economy principles requires intense research and access to suitable raw materials. Lacking time and capacity to find business partners could be tackled by local institutions, for example, that perform as circular business angels, who then offer support in networking or guidance in circular thinking, whilst following business motivations such as economical ambition, ambition for example. Um, one example is the Global Initiative Circular Economy Club, um, which some of you uh, may have already come across. And that's just one example for giving local support whilst performing internationally. And then as the fifth um, element, instigating community events that connect local people and participants can increase an overall awareness for injustice and social disadvantages. So talks, discussions or activities like clothing repairs can promote projects and foster integration and knowledge exchanges alike. Local platforms such as circular.berlin, for example, can accelerate business exchange and support changing mindsets towards a more inclusive economy.
To summarize, we really find that injustice and social disadvantage demand local solutions with an integrated social outcome. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly and becomes a threat to justice everywhere. Challenges that slow down business acceleration and social impact are tackled by individual motivation to drive change, one of the strongest pillars of the project investigated. The process of design is not specified within the definition of a circular economy, but we argue that a future directed circular economy includes design activism and social value by nature to benefit a wider society. As a circular economy is supposed to work effectively at every scale, multiplying small scale impact can really increase the larger level. And where individual motivation or circular economy business structures are lacking, we call on political support and community engagement. We suggest the entrepreneurial social circular business toolbox to support the facilitation of social business development through political and community engagement. And finally, by flipping Martin Luther King's quote, we conclude whatever affects one positively affects all indirectly and becomes a benefit to justice everywhere.